kind of purse looking thing that sits in the front of a kilt. It's oh, usually yeah. a leather bag of some sort. If you've got too much weight in that, you usually don't want to run because it might thump you. Can you can you use that for on an attacker like a lady would use her purse? No, it takes way too long <laughs> to get it off. You're listening to a 4 by 4 Radio Network Podcast. Are you ready? It's the Jeep Dog Show with Wendy. There will be body damage. Chuck. I like making people laugh. That's It's good for my soul. Josh. Yeah, I don't think so. And Joey. I think that's a huge deal. So sit back, strap in, and brace yourself. Well, howdy ho. Thank you for joining us for another roundtable. And uh, this, uh, you, you guys must be getting used to this by now. Every so often we have a question and answer with a uh, celebrity. And tonight's celebrity is going to be Greg Henderson, uh, also known as an unofficial use only. Uh, Greg has been uh, taking ideas and beating and forming them into reality for quite some time now. And last year, he built, and I'm hoping I'm getting the name, these names right. Uh, Greg will uh, correct me. Uh, last year, he built the YJL for SEMA 2021. And this year, the 5050 JTE two-door hybrid electric gladiator and so much more. Now, Greg, you and I were discussing about this from your, your prior uh, interview with the show that uh, I never received any kind of intro uh, from you. And you say, yeah, yeah, you did. And I didn't find it. So <laughs> tell people you were you were talking about 21 SEMA bills here just a second ago. Tell, tell people what all you've been doing. Um. Well, yeah. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm essentially just a peckerwood from Michigan who likes to build Jeeps, but um, I have, I've, I've accomplished quite a bunch, uh, that I'm proud of. Um, it is somewhere right around 20 SEMA builds for other companies and other employers. And then just ones that I've designed and built myself, um, been on the cover of, I don't know, a dozen or so magazines been inside of over 80 magazines. So, you know, but again, I'm, I'm just a guy who builds Jeeps in literally his backyard at this point. And I love it. So one of those cover magazine covers was uh, the kilt today, wasn't it? For wearing the, the very stylish kilts uh, at SEMA? No, su- surprisingly <laughs> enough, I, I wear a kilt all the time at all the shows. And I've never been, you know, nobody from a kilt company has ever said, hey, let's talk to us. Can we save you some money on your kilts? Yes. You know, they're not the cheapest things in the world. Oh, I bet. Uh, I would imagine that there's not a big, uh, a big market for them uh, in, in the States. You would actually be pretty surprised. There are a bunch of different companies around the around the United States that built that make kilts um, from UT kilts, which is what I'm usually in, to damn near kiltum. Um, even uh, Five Eleven Tactical makes kilts, and oh, they wow. started making them as a uh, actually an April Fool's joke. So you can only buy them around <laughs> April, but they sell out. So. Kilts are a lot more popular than a lot of people give them credit for because, um, you know, you're, you're free. Yeah, I was just so, going to say, I bet you could hide a lot of firepower underneath a kilt. You, you could hide a lot of firepower <laughs> under a kilt if you wanted. Um, you know, some of us just try and keep one weapon with us at all times. But, you know, sometimes you need two or three. So I've never been in this situation of wearing a kilt, uh, I'm sad to say. But do you keep an eye out for anybody with a mirror on their, uh, their shoes? No, because if they want to look, go for it. <laughs> and there's no need to be shy. Just ask. <laughs> yeah, well, and there was, a, so I've done it since I was a kid, but there was a song. Uh, it's a it's a Scottish song, and it's kind of a rite of passage song. But, um, you know, it's, it's this Scotsman, or the, the Scotsman's Kilt song. Uh-huh. And in it, you know, it's, it's Scotsman gets a little drunk, passes up by a tree, blah, blah, oh, blah. Oh, yes, I remember this by. one. Yes. Right. And so it, it's comical and it's fun, but... Uh, for guys who do wear a kilt and wear them, you know, traditional. Um, I used to all the time when, you know, before marriage, when I'd go to the bar, I'd make sure to tie a blue ribbon on it so that when they asked and when they wanted to check, <laughs> they knew they won first prize. <laughs> also, also worked as a starter. Zim! All right. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I know this last year you did a, 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 a 50-50 build, which was actually a Jeep uh, Gladiator two-door, electric uh, two-door. For uh, Quadratech and uh, Tread Lightly. Now, uh, I know you've done two builds uh, for at least Quadratech or uh, a partial Quadratech build. Have you done any other Quadratech builds before these these two? Um, 
Well, so those are the first two that I did personally for Quadratech. But when I worked for AEV, uh, we did build a couple things, and we worked a lot with Quadratech. So, um, you know, behind the scenes, my name wasn't attached to it or anything, but I was fortunate enough to work on a Quadratech build way before um, this year or last year. Gotcha. So, uh, and if you can say, how did they how did they seek you out for the? Uh, it was was it the YJL? Did I say that correctly? Yeah, so the YJL was a two-door JL converted to essentially a YJ. Um, a lot more than most people realize. When they see the pictures on the internet, they see the square headlights and, you know, a couple of creative things. But little do people know, it was dashboard and wiring harness and straight six and, you know, AX15. Like, we actually turned a JL into a YJ. Um, so the, the way that they... I know a couple of the guys at Quadratech, and, um, you know, they follow me. So they, they were at the point where they decided they were going to do SEMA. Um, so they were going to attend. They were going to become part of SEMA. And they wanted something cool and creative uh, versus just a bolt-on wonder like a lot of the vehicles you see. And I'm not discrediting any of those. They're all beautiful. But they wanted something that was cut up and reshaped and reformed to be more creative and get some attention. And so they got a hold of me. They asked me if I wanted to do one for them, and I jumped at the chance. And now we're, you know, we're on our second one, which the YJL uh, was, and I don't have exact confirmation, but some people have told me, even some marketing people, that the YJL was the most photographed Jeep at SEMA a year ago and this year with the jte as they call it um which was a four by e converted into a two-door gladiator uh, that was also the most photographed jeep at sema this year so you know two years running with quadratech to get the most photographed jeep is pretty cool i don't know if we'll be able to trump it but um i actually have a meeting at quadratech on thursday and we're going to talk about um uh, the past two years accomplishments and what are we going to do for next year oh that's good news i don't know if uh, we knew about this prior to this so uh, uh maybe this would be a considered a jeep talk show exclusive well you'll have to let us know how that goes and i, I don't know it's it's relatively secretive uh, isn't it right i mean at least right before the uh, the sema event sometimes yes sometimes no so um you know everybody's different some some companies love to show off what what's being built or what they're building um, sometimes people want to hide it. And so each individual build is, you know, kind of toted that way. It's, it all depends on the company and what they want to use it for, uh, whether or not you talk about it or not. Um, this year we actually, there was no gag order when we started the process of building the JTE. And then it was mildly comical to me that like, a week before SEMA, they said, oh, can you pull down the pictures you posted? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, sure. So, so, you know, every year is different. Um, every build is different. And, you know, we'll just see what we're going to do next year. Mm -hmm. Well, I've, I've got a couple ideas already. So hopefully they'll pick one of those so I don't have to come up with a bunch more ideas. Right. So, uh, and, and thankfully, uh, you were, uh, on, on, during the build, you were hanging out in the, uh, the Jeep um, talk show uh, roundtable Zoom meeting. So, uh, after a bit, we kind of started getting little peaks and things of the, the 4 by e being chopped up and put back together and stuff. And uh, it was actually rather comical whenever you started taking a uh, pickaxe to uh, the, the, um, the uh, what do you call it, the tailgate. Of, uh, of yeah, the, <laughs> of the yeah that, that tailgate was already it, it was already damaged and you know it was blown off steam. I think at that point that night I had had I don't know twenty or thirty hours of fabrication under my belt and um, but no being on the being on the in the group and hanging out you know Tuesdays and Thursday nights is actually a lot of fun for me. Um, I was really fortunate that Bob everybody knows and loves Bob. Bob uh, reached out and asked me if I wanted to, you know, come on and, and hang out with the guys at night. And 
during the build process, it just made it a lot of fun, you know, because during the day from 9.30 in the morning until 4.30 at night, I have Captain Redbeard here with me. But after that, you know, this is still a small business. So I, I stay out in my shop sometimes till 2, 3 in the morning working and being able to have that camaraderie and talk Jeeps and just talk, you know, fun stuff and drop knowledge bombs, uh, you know, with the group is a blast. Mm -hmm. We sure appreciate you being there. It's all a lot of fun. And and seeing the background, hearing some of the stories of uh, things that you've done, both uh, uh, famous and infamous. Uh, And I'm I'm not speaking mainly of like shooting holes into very expensive uh, hoods uh, that you have uh, framed on the wall. (laughs) Well, I'm about ready to shoot a hole in this 55 Studebaker I'm working on right now because it's really ticking me off. But but yeah, you know, you have to have fun, you know, especially oh, yeah. when, and, and a lot of people, I'm sure, you know, you guys, you have some of the best of the best in the industry come on your show and talk to you. And most of these people all started off with nothing and built a company and, you know, the long hours and the late nights. And it's just really good to have some form of stress release every once in a while, whether it's shooting an expensive hood or swinging an axe into a tailgate or whatever it is, you know, you, you, you got to have that every once in a while. Absolutely. You got to get, uh, let some of that uh, frustration or some of that focus, uh, go away, get away from you. You knew I was, uh, I was looking, trying to look this up to make sure I was saying it correctly. So the, the YJL going back here, a few sentences, the YJL, uh, you, you converted a lot of things to it to make it more YJ, uh, if that's even a term, uh, leaf springs, was was on you took a, took the coil springs out and put leaf springs on it is that correct no uh we actually did not that originally uh, I'm, was i'm seeing stuff on here that look, looks like leaf springs that's why i was asking about it. i couldn't remember if you had taken the coils out or not well i did leaf springs on um another jl a couple of years ago for sema i actually called it the j18 but um the yjl we originally were going to uh, do leaf springs. We even we talked about it, and then at one point, Ted, the owner of Quadratech, said, "No, no, no, <laughs> I want my Jeep to ride like a brand new JL." So um, we did not end up doing leaf springs on that one. Gotcha. Well, you know, uh, the, the, at least you know that Ted's going to be driving it, right? Oh yeah. Um, you know, and even with the the one that we just did, uh, the JTE. You know, a lot of people also see those, you know, they see these SEMA cars, right? And everybody sees the jokes and the stuff on YouTube about no drive shafts or this doesn't work or this right. doesn't run. Um, you know, that's kind of one of my sticklers is if it's not fully functional, it doesn't go. So even though we built the JTE in a, in a very short time frame, you know, basically less than three months from the time it was cut in half until the time it was displayed at SEMA, Everything functioned. Um, in fact, the day before SEMA, uh, got to run into Chuck from the Jeep Talk Show at a Tread Lightly event out in Vegas. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, it actually went off road before going on to the show floor at SEMA. And then the day after SEMA, which was Saturday, um, it was driven all the way to Moab, Utah and wheeled mercilessly. Uh, for, I don't know, seven days. And it's actually still there. It's with uh, Jeremy, who owns uh, Outlaw, which is a Jeep rental company and tour guide service in Moab. And he still has it in Moab and is still wheeling it. So, you know, sometimes show cars actually can get used. Yeah, and I, th- I know you're a real stickler about that. And uh, a-, a lot of... Uh, um respect uh, for you because of that because it's uh there's shortcuts that you can do and uh, and i don't know if you know how to do shortcuts because you go through everything in a very uh, detailed fine tooth comb uh but uh that means a lot uh, at least to, to me and i think a lot of people that this thing is a an actual vehicle that you can drive around of course it, it does bite you on the ass sometimes by uh throwing uh what was it 68 or 86 uh dte codes Oh yeah, that one. I, I don't remember the exact number. I think it was in the fifties, but okay. um, you know, luckily the Jeep Talk Show was privy to that before anybody else. Because <laughs> again, I was hanging out at night, um, and yeah, the 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 week before the show, yeah. when we finally got it together, um, <laughs> it, was it was so close. Paint. 
everything was almost 100% back together, and I took it to the dealership. Because it's a 4 by e I had to take it to the dealership to have the electric battery uh, essentially re-purged. So when you pull those electric batteries, which is like a 400-pound battery, you have to drain all the coolant out of it. And when you put it back in, you have to hook everything up, but then there's a very certain computer sequence that has to happen to cycle all of the pumps and make sure that that coolant is through the whole battery because, really? you know, you don't want an electric vehicle to burn down. Right. So when I took it to the dealership to have that done, lo and behold, it did. It had 40 or 50 or 60 codes, however many it was, because it was very upset that everything was disconnected. Um, and then there was, there was about 20 codes that were pretty useless. They were, um, you know, the left front soundbar speaker doesn't work or, and the right soundbar speaker doesn't work and blah, 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 because we turning it into a two door truck, we had to get rid of a lot of the speakers and other stuff and even some of the microphones. Um, so none of those mattered, but there was like the pesky fuel door because the four by E has an electric fuel door. No other Jeep does. And the electric fuel door does two things. It, when you push the button, it opens the fuel door, but there's also a purge valve after the, or right before the gas tank. So when you're trying to fill it with fuel, if you don't, even though it's no longer configured that way and doesn't have an electric fuel door anymore, when you go to fill the tank, it'll take you 45 minutes, you know, letting it trickle in or if you push that button, it opens the purge valve, and then you can fill it rapidly. And that's something that took some driving to learn. But, but yeah, it threw a lot of codes. My goodness. And we and, and we fixed them all before it went to SEMA. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, definitely. Because it it, you couldn't even drive it with all those codes. It was keeping it from driving. You know, I was just thinking. Well, I, it, wouldn't, I, it wouldn't even turn on. Yeah, I, mean, I, was, I was just thinking I would be really pissed off if I couldn't get my, uh, my Jeep inspected because one of my speakers was out. That would, that would be a pisser right there. See, well, luckily here in Michigan, we don't have to have inspections. Yeah, um, I don't know why we do in Texas, but there you go. But those codes um, do not trip a check engine light. Oh. So most, most places, so something that's actually engine related will trip, uh, you know, the, the check engine light. But codes for speakers not being plugged in and stuff like that do not trip the check engine light. Thank they God. just throw a DTE code. Right. So... If you were to get a bug up your hind end and decide to cut your gladiator in half and turn it into a two-door, um, you could get away with it because you wouldn't have a check engine light, which means it's not a red flag uh, and it's not an emissions thing, so your inspection would still pass. Gotcha. Well, that's interesting to know. Yeah, like I said, that would just uh, really be a, a very bad day. Well, Greg, I know you're aware of how this thing works with our uh, our Zoom meeting members. They're uh, eagerly waiting to uh, be able to talk to you about uh, SEMA and the JTE and pretty much anything else that uh, they'd like to talk to you about. Now, you've been in the uh, the Zoom meeting before, so I think you've been asked a lot of questions. So it'll be interesting to see what the uh, the regulars uh, have to ask you about, and uh, hopefully we got a, a few new people here that uh, are looking forward to asking you. So uh, you, you know, you know how this uh, people, you know how this works. Well, we now join the Zoom meeting already in progress. Please keep in mind that what you're about to hear is completely unrehearsed. The opinions may be strong or may or may not reflect the opinion of the Jeep Talk Show. Good evening, Zoom people, and please remember to state your name and general location whenever you uh, talk for the first time. Everybody, say hello, Greg. Hello, Greg. 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 <laughs> all right, all right, Greg. This is Chuck. I'm an American. That means I'm from America, and I'm tired right. of hearing your shit. You owe me dinner, goddammit. it! Oh, you dinner? You're the one that bailed out uh, at <laughs> one in the morning because you needed your beauty sleep. I thought it was hey, Chuck. Where, where in America what? are you, Chuck? <laughs> huh? Where in America are you? In the Best part, God's country, Kansas. Oh, damn. I thought you moved to Texas. <laughs> so. <laughs> so, all right. Greg, I got it. This is John, Central Texas. I got, I'll start us off with a quick question. Um, so we, we've been watching, like, all the, the cool stuff you've been cranking out, but I'm curious, like, how did you get into this as kind of a, a career? Like, how would a... Uh, 
how did you decide and kind of how did you develop your skills was it like self-taught or was it more just learning from the masters at AEV? i know you've kind of talked about that in the past but I wonder if you could highlight that a little bit um sure so i was actually a union bricklayer so you know i worked for my money and i used to have there was a shop here in michigan uh called the jeep outfitters and i used to pay the jeep outfitters to work on my jeep so um i think they went through three different builds on my jeep uh, my personal jeep at the time and i would hang out there and watch them and like everybody on the planet especially in the early 2000s saturday morning and sunday morning uh, if i had an opportunity i would tune in to the power block and i'd watch jesse combs and ian johnson and all the other shows uh, courtney hansen and i would watch them and learn every trick i could uh, because it was cool and it was fun and i was a you know car guy and Fast forward a little bit, um, I think it was 2006, I, as a union bricklayer, I was also a welder. So I did a lot of welding on the job. I was always welding. Um, I was one of the, you know, that was part of my thing as a bricklayer was to do the welding because you weld brick ties and stuff on. So I did a lot of welding. And end of 2006, um, I helped a gentleman who worked at Chrysler. Um, he was actually... I think his title was head of JK production, but he uh, needed his garage raised. And so, so we went over to his place and as a Jeeper, we used high lift jacks and we lifted his 36 by 60 pole barn five feet off the ground and laid uh, you know, a, free, a few courses a block. But he was a Jeep guy, you know, and he worked at Chrysler and he did all this cool stuff and he had these beautiful Jeeps. He even had an AEV Jeep that was a, you know, one of their 112 inch stretch TJs. And I made good friends with the guy. So then the next spring rolled around and AEV started a facility here in Michigan. And the facility that they had in Michigan, there was a, a gentleman named uh, Jerry. And Jerry moved from Montana to here in Michigan to run the shop at AEV. And about a month, five weeks or a month before Easter Jeep Safari, my friend, Dave Yegi, who was from Jeep and then at AEV, called me and asked if I had free time because he knew with my job I could elect to take time off. It didn't affect me. Um, he asked if I had some free time and if I could help put a brute together. Well, so early 2007, a brute was one of those things that you'd only ever see in a magazine or on the internet. And, you know, it was kind of a huge ordeal for a Jeep guy. So I jumped at the chance. I, I called into work the next day and said, hey, I'm going to take the next few weeks off. I have to help this guy. Um, and I did. Uh, went to his place and we assembled the Viper Blue TJ Brute that ended up in all the magazines and um, went to Ultimate Adventure, but we built that in his garage uh, with the help of my dad, who has always been a car guy. And when we finished that one, he asked me, he's like, hey, do you mind, can you come into AEV? Because Jerry, who came down to run their shop, ended up having a child and was moving to Georgia and they needed to get ready for Easter Jeep Safari. So they had to build another Brute and two JKs. And this is, you know, very early in 2007. So JKs were brand new. And again, you know, like a, a Jeep guy who was super excited, I was like, yeah, I'll come in and build another Brute and two JKs in three and a half weeks. Um, so that's what I did. And at the end of it, they... He asked me if I wanted to go to Easter Jeep Safari, another another dream of most Jeepers. Uh, you know, all expenses paid trip to Easter Jeep Safari. So I jumped at that too and said yes and hung out with AEV and, you know, talked Brutes and JKs and all the stuff to all the, all the Jeep people that were coming by. And at the end of the week, uh, he had apparently had some conversations with some of the other people at AEV and some of the higher ups and, he asked if I would like a job. 
Um, and to my wife's detriment and to my <laughs> detriment, I said yes. <laughs> um, which, you know, 2007, the, the bottom was kind of falling out of most industries and the construction industry was definitely, you know, we had, we were doing a lot of layoffs and other stuff. So it was a way to continue to make money, but I got to play with Jeeps. The downfall is, is I took like an 80% pay cut to go from a union bricklayer to, you know, a schmuck who works on Jeeps. But I, I had a blast. I learned an enormous amount of stuff. Um, and I did, uh, you know, I was the only tech at AEV for the first few months. So I went from a union bricklayer to essentially the head tech at AEV uh, with no mechanic experience other than I'm a fairly mechanical guy. Um, and, you know, that just grew and grew. I, I got to meet some wonderful people. You know, my dad was with Jeep for a while, so he was friends with all these lunatic fringe guys. And then Dave Yegi ended up being a lunatic fringe guy and introduced me to some more. And every chance I got, I worked on Jeeps, you know, whether it be during the day or at night, we would, we'd go work on secret projects for Chrysler. Um, and I just absorbed as much information as I could and, you know, kind of fell in love with it. So a hundred percent, I'm mostly probably 98% self-taught other than listening to old guys talk. Um, and I just like to be creative. So there's a very long-winded answer to your question. Oh, it was a great answer. And I just want to point out something. You were watching Power Block probably at the same time I was watching it. And uh, uh, not only did you um, get, not only did you uh, get to watch it and, and enjoy uh, Courtney Hansen on that, uh, you also got to uh, work or at least become friends with Ian Johnson, didn't you? Um, well, so yeah, that is, that is another funny one and well, not really funny, but just kind of a part of my story. Um, you know, I went from the guy who watched, you know, every Saturday and Sunday, I'd, I'd turn on the power block and I'd watch that. And, you know, as, as the years grew and once I left AEV and started kind of doing this stuff on myself, um, I ended up making friends with a lot of them. So, you know, Ian Johnson's on speed dial. Uh, he's, He's a good guy. I bounce questions off him. You know, he's he's one of the only people, aside from you guys, who got to see the JTE before before it was unveiled. Um, you know, and Jesse Combs, she was a good friend. Courtney Hansen, um, not only do, you know, I get to talk to her occasionally. Uh, a couple of years ago, I even was filming a TV show with her that, due to COVID, never got aired. But, you know, we filmed almost 20 episodes of a Jeep show that was going to be on Motor Trend. Um, but because of COVID, we never did the finale. So, you know, yeah, going from the guy watching them that Saturday morning to actually hanging out and having dinner and working with them. Um, you know, Jesse was a great friend and Ian's a good friend. And, you know, Courtney, I wouldn't say she's a great friend, but, you know, I've, I've gotten to work with her, which is pretty cool. And she, she's a wonderful person. So she's just not on my speed dial. So I'm not going to say she's a great friend. Right. Well, I mean, but, as long as she's not calling you Craig instead of Greg, I, I would consider her a great friend. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. She calls me Greg. Um, but, you know, and, and so many more, you know, I, because of this passion that we all have for Jeeps and because of my passion for them and, and as far as I've taken, you know, building them, um, I've gotten to meet some wonderful people. You know, I've gotten to meet and hang out with Aaron Kaufman from Gas Monkey and, um, you know, I met Richard Rawlings. I won't say I ever hung out. <laughs> I was going to say, you didn't mention Richard. <laughs> yeah, well, I, uh, you know, I, 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 don't know I, I feel the same but, way. Um, Watching that show, I feel the same way. <laughs> but, you know, so many great people, you know, Horny Mike and, you know, all these people that I watched on TV and learned so much from. And, you know, even people, Rick Payway, who Rick, you know, one of my heroes is a young Jeep guy, you know, watching these guys build these things and all the, you know, the comments and the articles and the magazines. And I mean, even today, I, I'm an owner of a company with Rick Payway, right? So one of my original idols, you know, Rick Payway and, and Stuart Bordine and Chris Collard and, and Tracy, you know, all these people who I looked up to and I, I read every word that they ever wrote. And now I'm involved in a business with them. You know, they're my friends. 
So the sky's the limit for anybody, right? If if you've got if you if you're passionate about any of this, just do it, right? I mean, that's how I learn. I just do it. I I learned how to reshape fenders by cutting one up and beating it with a hammer until it was what I wanted. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, anybody can do it as long as you put in the time and the effort and the hours and and struggle bust your way through it. And, and Greg, I think you're aware of this. Uh, I often, when I'm talking to people in the industry, I will say, uh, uh, you know, Greg Henderson, right? Because uh, that's the, that's what I'm doing. Because I'm actually, I actually know Greg Henderson, the guy that forms these these jeeps into works of art. So you're very much that. So every way. time you say that to somebody, do they just go, "Who the hell are you talking about"? Uh, honestly, honestly, and believe me, from being the Jeep Talk Show, I, I'm, I'm aware of this. Like, who the hell is that? <laughs> <laughs> but when I say the builds, when I say what the build is, they go, oh, yeah, I know Greg. Or they want to know Greg. I'm not too, quite sure which which of the two of those things are. But, <laughs> all right, so I'm sorry. Uh, well, we, the builds definitely get more attention than I do. Right. And well, that's fine. I, mean, I don't mind. With the, with the kilt, you know, that's uh, you're, uh, you're competing at least. Uh, you're in the, in the running. Um, so can you run in a kilt? I just, I guess you can, can't you? It's probably easier. Yes. So <laughs> yeah, the trick is, is you don't want to have too much in your spur an. So the, the, the spur an is that, um, kind of purse looking thing that sits in the front of a kilt. It's oh, usually yeah. a leather bag of some sort. If you've got too much weight in that, you usually don't want to run because it might thump you. Can you, can you use that for on an attacker like a lady would use her purse? No, it takes way too long to get it off. <laughs> All right, so sorry about that, uh, Zoom people. Uh, jump in there with your questions, and this surely has uh, generated more questions. <laughs> Everyone's afraid to talk. <laughs> it's because I talk so much. No, you're doing great, Greg. Greg. I, I can, I can uh, actually contest. I've seen Greg run across the strip at uh, in Las Vegas in a kilt, so... You can definitely run in a kilt. I've watched them do it. So I think we've we've covered this in the past, but just to bring everybody up to date that may be a new listener. So Chuck well, recently went out to SEMA uh, to uh, represent the Jeep Talk Show, and he went out there and uh, met Greg at the uh, the Quadratech uh, um, Tread Lightly uh, 5050 JTE event and trail cleanup event. And uh, uh, Greg and uh, Chuck hung out, hung out a little bit. And, of course, when I say Chuck, I'm, he's our, our newest co-host on the Jeep Talk Show. So uh, I brought everybody up to date, Chuck. They know who you are now. Man, he's a redwood of a man, too. People, you, you'll never get it watching a Zoom meeting. But, um, man, Chuck is a big dude. And not like big like he eats too much. Like he's just a, a redwood of a man. Yeah, well, he, no. he gets that red from being out in the sun all the time. Greg, you and I see eye to eye. You're talking fucking crazy right now. I'm five, <laughs> just like you are. Five eleven, five eleven. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, five eleven. When he's on his knees. Wow. Wow. Well, that's Only kill this for. I mean, I don't know. How do I respond to that? <laughs> wow. Twenty dollars is twenty dollars, right, Chuck? I, I thought I had heard the full story <laughs> of Sema. <laughs> yeah, Sema was fun, huh? Yeah. Great. <laughs> I, I need to I need new springs for the scrambler and Greg's like call these people I'm like I'll get on my knees can you make it a little cheaper Greg I'm like good luck <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. I guess that's a good question Greg what, what do you think yeah. is the worst Jeep and, and and why is it the scrambler <laughs> fuck <laughs> off <laughs> the worst Jeep so I would say the CJ five hmm. <laughs> and, and, and there's, Greg, actually, no, I, I won't say the CJ5. Let me replace that. Not that Greg. The, <laughs> yeah, I didn't hear a word you said. But I, let me change it. Not the CJ5. The CJ3B. So the uh, wheelies, right? The very, the very first wheelies, everybody in the world loves it. It's, it's wonderful. It's amazing. It's America all wrapped up into one little 80-inch wheelbase package. But at some point in, like, the early 50s, some bonehead decided to make the hood way too tall, and they made 19, this CJ3B. Greg, Greg, it's 1953. They did that because they went from the L head to the F head four cylinder, which went from 50 horsepower to 90 horsepower, and it needed for the overhead cam. God damn it, Greg. Yeah, but, but they didn't need to change the hood to that ugly high hood mess. They could have left they, it alone. They did. And it is called the 
the ugly high hood, but I own one and it's a great Jeep. <laughs> well, yeah, and because it's, a, it's the running gear is essentially a copy of the real Jeep, which doesn't have that ugly Daffy Dill <laughs> high or Daffy Duck and, high hood thing. And, and yeah, <laughs> I agree. It's called the, the ugly duckling of all the Jeeps. And that's why in 1955, they changed to the CJ5, which actually had the rounded hood, which would allow that the F head four cylinder to be put underneath a hood and it wouldn't be flat. That's why they did it. All right. Well, thank you for the, the history lesson of why they made that god awful ugly Jeep. <laughs> it so doesn't matter. My, ugly is ugly. <laughs> history or not, is, I think is what Greg is that saying. Is, that is my least favorite Jeep. Uh, and only purely based on looks, right? It literally looks like if you watched, what is it, Looney Tunes as a kid, right? Elmer Fudd with his big hat. Yep, that's that Jeep. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Greg, this weekend I'm bringing the ranch Jeep out, and I'm going to start sending you pictures directly. All right. Well, the, just, just don't send me pictures like you did at SEMA. That'll scare people. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I realize that now we both have uh, Greg and Chuck on, so this is an opportune time for uh, me to start the discussion about the naming. Because uh, if, if Greg starts churning out a lot of these two-door gladiators, like I've suggested, uh, that it needs a proper name. Two-door gladiator doesn't really roll off the tongue as well as a Jeep Scrambler. And Scrambler, shut the fuck up. <laughs> and call it, 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 it can't can't be a Scrambler. Be a scrambler. Yeah, it's it's, a, it physically can't be a scrambler because it has a separate bed. The bed is separate from the cab. Scramblers were not separate. Greg, you know scramblers, that scrambler scramblers were was, amazing and scramblers are amazing, but they have an they don't have a detached bed. Hang on, hang on one second. You guys take a pause. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> I said Greg, scramblers are amazing and I love scramblers, but they don't have a detached bed. And because the yeah. bed is not detached. A gladiator yeah. cannot be a scrambler. Uh, the answer, that was AMC's answer to the very small, less than half ton pickup. That was the pickup. That was the Jeep pickup. That what That's the answer uh, to the Toyota uh, and the Nissan's back in the early uh, 80s. And you know that, Greg. No, for shit. They had the J10. They had the J10s and they had the J20s. They had a small pickup. And then they had, well, no, it was after that when they came out to Comanche. But, but yeah, the, the, the Scrambler was just, the scrambler was just cool. The Scrambler's cool. I'll give you that. But it's not, you can't call a Gladiator Scrambler. That's just blasphemy. You know what? I hate you right now. See, like, I, I'm gonna... I told you Chuck agreed with me. <laughs> I told you that he agreed with me because he's he's already heard this from uh, other uh, uh, Jeep uh, Zoom members about that can't be a uh, a scrambler because it doesn't have a detached. I mean, it has a detached bed. Greg, that's why I just jumped up on the bed of your truck when you were, when we were out there in SEMA and you weren't around. Jumped up on the bed. Larry was even like, "Price Chuck," I was like, "It's a pickup truck, just like a scrambler. Nothing's wrong with this. So everything's weird. fine." Like what? Well, it, it is fine. It, there's nothing wrong with jumping on the bed of a pickup truck. You're more than welcome to jump on the bed of a pickup truck. But a pickup truck and a scrambler are two different things. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is a good one for, for you, the listener. What do you guys think? Do you think that, uh, you know, you guys have seen the JTE, and if you have it, you can check out Quadratech or Unofficial Use Only on Instagram. Just, have a, have all a you got to do is go to Google. Yeah, that's true. Uh, and, and you can just do a search for JTE, right? Yeah, yeah. You search JTE and Jeep, and you'll see you know twenty news articles and a million pictures. So let let's hear from you. And, what and do you they guys all think? Lead back to unofficial use only in in Quadratech. <laughs> so uh, let's hear from you, the listener. What do you think? Uh, could the uh, JTE be called a scrambler? I think yeah. so. I mean, you can't yeah. see the the bed separation uh, from the pictures. Is what I'm saying. <laughs> well, then, then, you, then you definitely need new readers <laughs> it's a lot closer match than they did with the names of the renegade and thank you Jericho, right? thank you yes yes it's a I mean it's a better yeah. re, re brand, a rebranding of something that is closer to the original than what they've done with like, the renegade and the, the new cherokee and uh, i'm sure several other things well, well greg will this help you if 
if you make me one and put <laughs> scrambler on the hood, I'd buy one. <laughs> I, 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 I will I will happily make you one and put scrambler on the hood. Wow, I did not see that coming. <laughs> All right, so a scrambler it is. I win. Thank you, Greg. This cost some breakfast now, the next morning. Now, so Chuck's which buying a ver- four which version. Do you want scrambler? Do you want the do you want the three ninety two? Yeah. Or do you want oh, the God. diesel? Or do you want the three yes. six? Or do you want the least desirable, which is the four by E? Oh, you had him uh, three three ninety two. Wait, 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 wait. Back up this happy train. I can have a three ninety two or a diesel. Or a diesel. Yes. Yeah, they they, um, they build. So you, you can go to the you can go to the dealership and pick up a four door, and the options are a three ninety two, a diesel, a uh, three point six liter, and um, the four door. Well, so so you can order a three ninety two, and I will build it into a two door. Greg, I already I have put, a badass for you, Rambler SB eight. For you, so I'll I even put out Rambler. Well, for you, diesel. I'll even put leaf springs in the back. <laughs> Perfect. It's only money. Then you can actually, then you can actually haul stuff. So, Greg, I I probably know the answer to this already, but I'm going to ask anyway. So, would it be easier or advisable to convert a four by e or a just a a a JL JL JLU or uh, actually convert a a gladiator from a a four door to a two door? Um, four door to the two door. Uh, Don't start with a gladiator. So the, the chassis is, the chassis, di- well, everything's different, but the, um, so, the chassis is different and the wiring is different. I mean, literally everything's different. So it's, it would be much more, uh, much more cost effective. Just, just start with a four door JL. So Greg. Yes, sir. Hey, Greg. How, how much would this $50,000 build cost? <laughs> Which part? <laughs> You're right. The front part. <laughs> <laughs> the um, so first you'd have to buy. You, you know, you start with the base vehicle, and I don't know what the cost is on a three ninety two JL, but I'm going to say what? it's probably around seventy. What is, what is it, Bill? Seventy? Eighty four. No. It's it's like low eighties. Oh yeah, eighty four. But but if the company buys it, it's free. Correct. In fact, if, if the company buys it, um, you can write off the entire purchase price in the first year if it's a company vehicle. I'm fully aware, Greg. Yeah. <laughs> then you buy two? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you could actually, you know, you could buy 50 if you wanted, if you had a big enough company. Well, no, I mean, you're the one that's going to be converting it. So, uh, and, and I don't know if everybody knows this, you will do conversions for, for people, for the general public. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'll do uh, conversions for the general public. In fact, I've got, uh, I mean, right now, I'm, I'm physically standing in my shop and physically working on a 1955 Studebaker pickup truck that is a full restoration. Um, and... I also have, uh, what is it, a 1961 Willie Spleet van that I'm doing a conversion for for a gentleman in Arizona. Uh, we're making it a handicap van. And outside the door, I've got the 75 Cherokee Chief for a gentleman in Saudi Arabia. Um, and on my trailer behind the building, I just brought home from Moab, Utah, a CJ6 with a world cab top that I'm going to do a conversion for. Uh, for a gentleman in Moab, Utah. Um, so yeah, I, I I don't just do them for companies. I, I do them for whoever wants something cool. And uh, the the time frames on them can be quite uh, quite long due to what you have already in progress. Correct. Uh, well, due to what I have in progress, and f- due to what you want done. So everybody's different. Everybody wants something different. Um, I mean, if it's a if it's Tony dropping off his gladiator and saying, let's do a lift kit and wheels and tires, you can probably have it done, you know, in a few days. If it's cut your Jeep in half and turn it into a two door truck, it's probably going to take several months. Um, and, and even varying, you know, this restoration, this 1955, it's four and a half years that we've been working on it. Um, 
because we don't work on it consistently. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it was it was a time frame based on the customer, and then he sent it to the paint shop and paid for a paint shop, which ended up it was gone for two years. Oh my goodness! So, um, <clears throat> you know, he worked out some deal with the paint shop, and for some reason, it took two years, and and I got it back. So, the time frame varies based on build, based on what you want done to it, and, you know, currently availability of parts, which I hate to even say is a thing, but it really is a thing. Right. Um, you know that the 75 Cherokee Chief for, for uh, Saudi Arabia, it took 420 days from the day I ordered the axles until the day that they showed up. So we do have supply chain issues. In fact, right now it's still not done because we're waiting on... Um, a computer, because Mopar has zero computers. So, you know, sometimes we have to wait for things. So that that might sit here for another two or three months before I get to do anything to it again. Mm -hmm. But if if you're going with a simple build, um, something that's purely fabrication and not, you know, redo everything, then yeah, things things are much quicker. Um, you know, if if Chuck honestly wanted a 392, <clears throat> currently. Yeah. Yeah, if if he wanted it right now, uh, it, he wouldn't see it for at least six to seven months. Well, how that's See, better. He wanted. Truck. I know Ford. Ford's telling me that if I buy another truck right now, I won't get it to the end of next year. Wow, that's amazing. And I need another yeah. work truck. Oh, so you and I might dance. <laughs> True story. Well, I believe you. But yeah, so so yes, um, you know we'll do anything. Uh, we well, I won't say we'll do anything, but um, <laughs> I'm also as as you know for for the listeners out there, um, I'm also pretty picky. So if you want me to, and and I I don't want to ruffle into anybody's feathers, but if you want me to put some cheap Chinese bumpers on your rig, I'm just going to flat out tell you no. You can you can go to a normal shop for that. Um, I only use high-end parts. I, I I only use the best of the best. Every nut, every nut, and every bolt gets a torque wrench. Uh, we're extremely retentive here, so we'll not use garbage. Um, I don't care if you want to pay me to put garbage on; I still won't do it. But if if you want some some really bad junk put on your car, I'm just not going to do it. I'll tell you to go somewhere else. Yeah. So, I, you know, not to ruffle anybody's feathers that way, but. You know, it's not, the customer is not always right. And I hate to say that, but I, I won't devalue my reputation so that you can save 10 bucks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was, was this was, what I was going to mention was because uh, you obviously, uh, when uh, people learn your name, and I, and I think a lot of people, kind of like the Jeep Talk Show, people uh, find out who we are because they've listened to the episode and going, oh my God, I didn't even know this existed. And then when they, say, they see builds at SEMA and they go, my God, who built that? Greg Henderson, unofficial use only, then they know the name. So it, I think it is very, you got, you're in very much the same uh, boat we are in, that you do something that's so great uh, that uh, people remember you once they see something that you've produced. Well, my, and, and Chuck will like this one, but my grandpappy told me once, ah, um, don't ever settle on yourself. Don't ever settle on what you do. Bust your ass until people know your name, and mm -hmm. that's what I'm trying to do. Yeah. Amen, Greg. Preach it, brother. Preach it. I had to say grandpappy just for Chuck because, you know, well, I'm not you all know old. it's Chuck. <laughs> Greg, you're old for no, I'm, not, I'm not saying you're old. I'm saying grandpappy because most Americans don't say grandpappy. They say grandfather or grandpa. Grandpappy Man. is just some hick thing. <laughs> No. No. <laughs> Damn it. Yeah, Chuck puts the hick and hickory, so it's it's a it's a <laughs> it's a good flavor. Uh, I mean, that's better than calling him a redwood. We got to call him a hickory from now on. The hickory stick. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so, Greg, this is Larry from St. Louis area. So, is there a build on your list that you just dying to do? Just looking for the uh, I'll say someone to bankroll it. Yes, um, I actually have. So, and that's one of my problems is, you know, I've, I've never really built appropriately. So um, I'm not independently wealthy. I don't own any brand new cars because I can't afford them. But um, 
I have several builds that I would love to do. Um, I have I have renderings, so I can share renderings with people if they really want to see them. But I have a and excuse my French. I know we can swear on here, but I have a hard on to build an AMC Eagle wagon, like oh, you wouldn't yes. believe. That would be cool. Um, and I have a rendering of it. Um, you know what I'd like to do is take an because an AMC Eagle wagon is the only reason that Jeep still exists. Um, but I've got a rendering of it. The AMC Eagle Wagon has a 109-inch wheelbase, so it's basically a TJ Unlimited stretched five inches. So I'd like to take a wagon. I'd like to put a TJ Unlimited chassis underneath it with the modern powertrain, give it kind of a mid-arm, um, <clears throat> 37-inch tires with no lift, and then delete the rear doors and make it look like an 80s panel. Um, so that's one that's on my dream list. I've got another one that's... Uh, I could do to any JK or JL, um, whether it be, so any, any Wrangler built after 2007, um, or Gladiator, but I've got a 1972 Jeep Commando front end. And the Jeep Commando was a Jeepster, but then they, they made this front end, they called it a bull nose. So it kind of looks like a Bronco front end or a International Harvester. And I would love to graft one of those onto a JK or a JL. Um, I think J, JL would be the most appropriate right now. Um, and, and it would fit really well. But especially with the Bronco craze, I think yeah. that would just blow some people's minds. Um, and same thing, usually when I do these, when I do like the conversions where I, I reshape the sheet metal, um, you know, and you can Google like Path Killer or some of those where I really reshape them. I, I think I could get away with 37s with no lift. So just factory ride height, get 37s to fit on it um, with that bull nose front end. Or, you know, for the people that want the big dumb tires, um, you know, we could get away with probably a two inch lift in 40s pretty easily. Mm -hmm. But that would be a really cool build that, that I would love to do. Um, I just, I can't bankroll them myself because I don't have a bankroll. You no. know, maybe... If if I keep being successful and I keep being able to build these things, you know, maybe five years from now, um, I'll be uh, in the position to just build my dream cars and then sell them when I'm done playing with them. You know, that, that would be a pretty big goal for me is just to, to build all of these crazy things that are in my head, um, play with them for a few months and then sell them to people who, who want something 100% unique. I think you. I think this is uh, this is true. Maybe I'm sorry. Maybe still true. The the path killer, which was basically a uh, JKU uh, with a uh, an XJ uh, nose and a front end on it. Uh, that one is for sale by the the person that had that uh, originally built. Correct. Yeah, that's um, it's it's located here in Michigan. Um, the gentleman lives in Michigan, and he's a. Uh, mm, I don't know how many miles he's, he's maybe put 2000 miles on it in four oh years. Um, it, it basically lives its life in a storage container mm -hmm. and, but he's not a Jeep guy, right? He was, uh, he worked at a company and was the president of a company who was making a Jeep part. And when they dissolved, um, he kept the Jeep because it was technically his property and it just, Desperately needs a new home. Um, the funny part is, is it, it would be sold for way less than it cost to build it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I mean, it was a brand new Rubicon when I did it in 2016. And so he had, you know, $50,000 Jeep. And then we put $40,000 in aftermarket parts on it, plus the conversion, plus the paint job. So, you know, it was probably all in at about 120 to 140 grand, somewhere right in there. Um, and I think he'd sell it for 45 or 50 grand. Just and it, it really doesn't have very many miles on it. Yeah. Beautiful, um, beautiful build. And and that was the one that, that made me learn about Greg Henderson. I saw that and I looked at it and looked at it and went, I like it, but there's something different about it. I couldn't quite place it because you make things that look factory. I mean, I mean not exclusively, but whenever you build something, just like the, the two-door Gladiator, the JTE, it looks factory, but you know it's different because nobody has a two-door Gladiator. 
So uh, right. th- I, that one, I, th- I think that one stands out a little bit more than the Path Killer. But you guys look up Path Killer if you're not already aware of this thing. But it is beautifully done, has an XJ front end to it. And I would have been really happy if they had come out with that as the new Cherokee <laughs> instead of what they came out with, that tennis shoe that they came out with. Oh, God. Well, and the, and the 4 by e you know, when I when I did that and turned it into the Gladiator, that's one thing that I actually tried to get Quadratech to let me do was put that front end on it so mm-hmm. that, you know, so it was a modern Comanche. But right. They didn't want to do that. Yeah. It's actually probably a little closer to a Comanche than a Scrambler, but Scrambler has such a cool name to it. I mean, you could put uh, an, a scrambled egg there in the logo, all kinds of crap that you could do to it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Greg, uh, always fun conversation, uh, and uh, thank you for doing this. And uh, was there? Oh, quick question: Is there anything going on with the stolen uh, e-bike that uh, uh, happened out at SEMA? Um, no. So the, you know, some people know it. Uh, the people on the stock show definitely know it. But um, when I was out at SEMA, I had because the four by e is an electric vehicle um, or a, a hybrid. I had a couple of the Jeep Rubicon Quiet Cat electric bikes, which is a, you know, electric assist bike. And one of them was stolen at an industry party out in Vegas. Um, you know, got a hold of police, did the whole thing. Uh, it has not been recovered. It has not been found. Uh, whoever stole it essentially at this point has still gotten away with it. So, I'm out an e-bike, uh, which really bums me out because I played with the things quite extensively um, leading up to SEMA and then all week at SEMA. And then afterwards, we were in Moab for a week and I got to ride surprisingly a lot of trails that there's no way my uh, 5'11", 210-pound fat ass could ride on a normal bike. And, you know, I did Hell's Revenge and I did... <laughs> metal masher and a few other trails on on, on a pedal bike yeah. because it has that electric assist so I'm, I'm still pretty bummed out that i'm missing one um but uh as the show circuit starts to come around i'll you know maybe i'll get back a hold of quiet cat and see if i can get a replacement so that you know i always have one for somebody else to play with mm-hmm. so you, you would say that the quiet cat uh, e-bike is uh, greg henderson approved it's not only approved like I know I'm on a contract with them and they, you know, they're supposed to get it back and uh, they might have to pry it out of my cold dead fingers because I love this thing. It's, you know, I'm, I'm, well, I just turned 45, so I'm 45 years old. Uh, My birthday was the other day and it's made me love biking again. You know, I haven't, I wasn't, I haven't been into biking since I was in my teens. Right. And it's it doesn't take you know it's 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 not so simple that it's like riding a motorcycle right you st- I'm still pedaling I'm still doing the stuff I still break a sweat um, but I can it makes me feel like I'm a teenager again because I can go up those hills and I can go off those jumps and I can do those things that my body is not ready to do because it assists me that much so yes the Jeep Rubicon Quiet Cat bike is one hundred percent. Greg Henderson approved. I really, really like the thing, and I think everybody should try one. I think the only downfall is that they're expensive. Yeah, very expensive, but they are very nice, which makes it makes it a little better. Uh, it's kind of like uh, getting a Greg Henderson build. It's expensive, but it's very nice. <laughs> well, uh, you know, it hasn't always been expensive. <laughs> it's just getting there quickly to get a Greg Henderson build, um, and I'm still not that expensive. I, like my hourly rate is still cheaper than going to a dealership. Oh, right. Wow. So, um, if if you want suspension and you know wheels and tires and light bars and all that stuff, which I I don't really like light bars. I think lights are dumb. But um, if you want your regular Jeep build and with just a little custom flair, you know maybe it's some custom paint or a couple small custom things, I'm cheaper than in a lot of shops that are in the country. You know because I don't have a lot of overhead. It's me and one guy and. Um, but yeah, if, if you want the custom cut it in half, rechange things, yeah, it's definitely more expensive than your regular place because it takes a lot more time. 
Sure. And and, ti- uh, and, and time is money. And skill set. So uh, real quick, where are you located in case somebody would like to uh, contact you? How do they contact you and, and about what part of the country are you in? Um, so to contact me, all you have to do is uh, go to the old Google or go to, you know, uh, Facebook or Instagram or YouTube and look up unofficial use only. Um, that's my company. It's my trademark. And my everything's listed. You know, my phone number's on there, which is 586-855-3994, which is my personal cell phone, right? Uh, again, we're not big. So because I'm not big, you know, I'm a little shop that does big things. But um, if you call, you're going to get me. You're not going to get some Yahoo that answers phones. Um, And we're in the middle of the mitten of Michigan. So I am 30 minutes due north of, you know, uh, Jeep headquarters in uh, Auburn Hills, Michigan. So I'm I'm 30 minutes north of there. I'm I'm actually very close to a town that everybody in the world has heard of. I'm very close to Flint, Michigan. Uh, And the water is not as bad as it says. (laughs) It has good flavor, I hear. Um, it's, it's actually perfectly fine. They, <laughs> they, they, they really blew it out of proportion on the news. Oh, um, yeah. you're telling me the news blows things out of proportion? Shocking. No, never. No, <laughs> but yeah, there, there were some old pipes and, you know, like old stuff that still had lead soldering. Yeah. And people were complaining, but you know, there was a way to fix it. And that was called, uh, put a filtration system on your house. Don't force the government to come in and spend millions of dollars bailing out, but whatever. Um, yeah, I'm very close. I'm very fl- close to Flint, Michigan. It's uh, it, it's just free money, Greg. It's not government money. It's free money. So there you go. That's the reason why. Well, Greg, thank yeah, you so well, much for being here with us, and I really appreciate you uh, showing up here in the, in the Zoom meetings. It's always a lot of fun, uh, and we always get to learn something. Uh, some things we don't want to know, but most things we do. <laughs> yeah, but you wanted to know about the blue ribbon on my kilt. <laughs> Oh, I misunderstood. It was on the kilt. Thank God. No, no, it wasn't on the kilt. It was under the kilt tied to something else so that you know you won first prize. <laughs> well, Greg, thanks a lot for being with us. And uh, you guys need to, uh, the listeners need to come here and join us in the, uh, the Zoom meeting. And uh, you can uh, uh, interact with Greg in the Zoom meeting many times. He's not here every Tuesday, but he's always sad whenever he doesn't make it in for the for the recording. And uh, I didn't mention, but our recordings uh, for the uh, roundtable episodes are every Tuesday, 8 p.m. Central Time. Uh, and uh, we have a guest or we have uh, uh, multiple questions to ask and to, to talk about. Like, uh, should uh, the two-door gladiator be called Scrambler? Which I think that is what we should really push jeep for you know like they would really listen to us but hell let's give it a try you never know so uh until next week we will uh, talk to you then and uh, next week will be a series of questions that you can join in and answer uh just sign up for our newsletter jeeptalkshow.com slash contact to scroll on down look for the uh, the link on how to sign up for our newsletter and you will get an advanced copy of not only uh, a guest that we're going to have but also the questions that we'll be asking in the zoom meeting so until next week Have a a great week, and don't miss the other three episodes that we have this week. Podcasting since 2010.